Blog Talk Radio. Bitch. 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 Can you hear me? Bitch. 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 We're in. Hi, guys. I see. How you doing? Did you have a good, good weekend? Man. Yeah, I did. I had a great weekend, actually. <laughs> yes. Well, a lot of time to myself. Feel real good. Uh-huh. So, um, done. should we give the call-in number for these people? Yeah. Although, you, since you are going to be listening to this pre-recorded, um, I think this call number is going to lead you to a dead num- to a deadline. So, but, we'll just pass on that. But uh, next, starting Friday, we're going to be streaming live, and you'll be able to call in during a certain segment of the show, and uh, we'll, have, we'll be able to figure some stuff out together. No. Uh-huh. That's your gripes. Welcome to Kick in the Ho. Welcome. Yes. To Kick in the Ho. So All right, man. I guess we want to start off. Do we want to start off with Glenn Beck? Or Glenn Reck as I call him actually. Glenn Beck. Yeah, Glenn Beck yeah. and the he specifically Glenn Beck and the Fed. Yeah. Very interesting show on uh that aired and now all of a sudden Glenn Beck is not on the air anymore. Oh. Not a big fan, but I must say it's interesting that he's not on the air anymore. I was wondering what you thought about that. Well, I think it's this is fuck. I mean, I think I, so. Glenn Beck uh, a few days ago, I think um, I don't know. No, it was a couple of weeks ago, at least like March 27th. The YouTube videos uploaded. Mm-hmm. He had a uh, had a guy on his show that wrote this book called The Creature of Jekyll or from Jekyll Island. Is yes, that that's correct. His uh-huh. name was G. Edward Griffin, and, who was uh, the author of Creature. Uh, from Jekyll Island, which is the book. So this guy comes on the show and they talk about the Federal Reserve. I mean, they really ripped the Federal Reserve a new one. Mm-hmm. And this is on online on YouTube, which I will post the link. Um, yeah, we're going to post that to kickintheho.info. Guys, that's not up yet, but uh, that will be posted in the next few days on kickintheho.info. And the one thing for me about Glenn Beck, he said a couple interesting things in this particular episode mainly that they were digitizing the money. And I, he said that twice, and I thought that was really interesting. Like the head of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, uh, went public saying, we're not printing any more money. And right. Multiple times he said that. But they are making more digital money. Digital money. So I'd like, I'd like a little bit of definition to that. I, I, don't you think they need to just, like, explain that? Yeah. I've heard, and I can just, I'm just going to hypothesize, I'm just going to tell you what I've heard, just through the grapevine, that it's somehow related to chips. And I find that I found that obviously they didn't talk about that, but that's what I've heard. What are chips? I don't know. Somehow it digitized money in chips, so I don't know. That's kind well, of obviously George or or Orwellian, if you will. But that's what I've heard. What do you mean they digitized it in chips? Like, I, well, I wish I could tell you more. That's just what I've heard. But back to Glenn Reck, as yeah. I call him. And even let's let's give a just the background of what the Federal Reserve is. You may not know. It's uh. it's like a uh, private company. Well, it's, it's technically. It's not private company and it's not a public company. It's supposed to be like this this ghost like company that works in cahoots with world governments, basically gives the governments the money. And the government then gets the money to the banks, the banks to the people. People yeah. back to the banks, to the government, back to the Federal Reserve. Right. With interest. It's very messed up because they used to have be like they could only give out enough money based on the amount of gold they had. Now it's just mm-hmm. they're allowed to do whatever they want. They can print as much as they want at any moment. Right. It, it's interesting because the money's technically not backed by anything. And then we had this little tidbit that we dug up also um, that there's no legal consideration technically for Federal Reserve notes. So if there's no legal consideration, meaning there's no statute that authorizes Federal Reserve notes. So that's really interesting. And when you kind of look into it a little bit more, but I think what you said was true. I mean, it's basically – running the government but it's not part of the government and it can never be audited supposedly so we don't we can't really audit them so the point of the matter is they say that these class a stockholders don't exist right and that the class b stockholders own it but uh you know trying to find out exactly exactly who you're dealing with sometimes is very very difficult you know, and so glenn beck uh they, they he and uh e uh, g edward Morrow or uh, Griffin? Hold on, Morrow. Morrow, yeah. Morrow, yeah. Morrow, yeah. Um, well, they get on and they they really start naming the names, and all of a sudden Glenn Beck gets canceled. So his show's done now. Right. Fox. Absolutely. Um, and 
you know, if you think, like some people, I've, I have a quote here, actually. I actually did a, I was reading this and came up with this very interesting quote about, from a U.S. attorney. Her name is Ann Tompkins. Now, this is actually in regards to um, a, um, a group, I believe, printing Liberty Dollars. And this is what she said. I'm quoting this U.S. attorney, uh, attorney um, Ann Tompkins. She said here, attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country are simply a unique form of domestic terrorism. I want to say that again. I, I, I just, Okay. Please say it again if you want. I, I have some real disagreement with that. Oh, go ahead. What, please. Well, they, they made specific laws that say you can't print your own money. It doesn't mean that it's terrorism. It's just illegal. All right, well, this, I'm just giving you this quote. I think it's an interesting quote because she ties currency to terrorism, and that's what I thought was interesting. So if indeed this currency that we now have is not legal, supposedly, mm -hmm. then, then what is that? You know, what's that about? So that, ah. that, that's the question I would have myself. Well, what do we do? How do we, how do we bring this – Change this. Well, it has to be the people. I mean, it's not going to come from the politicians who are participating, you know. So I just think it's, it's interesting. Obviously, when you listen to this quote from this U.S. attorney, uh, Ms. Tompkins, it's very interesting. So who, who is she? Well, all I'm saying is based on this quote, because this is a – I thought this was a great quote, and I wrote it down. Based on that, this quote, if what is – if Glenn Black is saying he – what he's stating is correct, Okay then can the Fed be considered domestic terrorists? terrorists? It's a very interesting Logically, question. Logically, yes. I guess so. So that's what the people are going to have to decide, um, and, or we're just going to be forever in debt, technically. Jeez. Well, I don't know what we owe. We owe ourselves. What? Yes, I agree. We, this, is, this is great. I could go on and on about this, but we've got – some other stuff. Yeah, we got some other stuff. We wanted to mention. Listen, we wanted to make it. We wanted to talk about the Glenn Beck thing because we think it's important that you guys at least hear about it. You, when you go to the um, when it's posted online on on the Don Info site, kickingtheho.info, just check it out, and then we'll let people make their own decisions technically. But he's no longer on the air, and John Stewart had a quite a send up on on uh, Glenn Wreck, as I call him, Glenn Wreck. On his show, I think it was last week. So you can, that's also online if you want to check that out. But, uh, yeah, Glenn Beck, there you go. So you tell me. I don't know. All right, guys. So uh, we'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Kick in the Ho with Joey Ho and I see. Hello, hello. Topanga Earth Day. Guys, we want to tell you about Topanga Earth Day. April 23rd and 24th. If you're anywhere near Topanga, California, you can come in, take a plane, train, however you get here. It's uh, 10 a.m. to sunset on both those two days. Uh, the kickoff is Friday, April 22nd from 7 to I'm with wine tasting. That's on Friday, April 22nd. Topanga Earth Day, which is uh, 23rd and the 24th. Bill Kreutzmann, ex, ex Grateful Dead will be at this show on Sunday. So it's a Topanga Community House. Let me give you some more information. You can go to www.topangaearthday.org. Please check that out. Thank you. And uh, Joey and I will both be there. So you know, if you want to come on down and talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. It would be great to see you there. Absolutely. We were actually going to mention Skype because we're on Skype right now, aren't we? We are. We're using Skype. So we we uh, we're just – where we just want to tell you good people out there, Skype it up. I, Skype is amazing. So the other day, we, we're doing this radio show, and it's, it's a call-in type of show. Where we, you, the host actually has to call in to a phone number. And it's like, you know, I just don't like using my minutes. I'm paying excessively large amounts of money for this phone bill right now. I'm right. Over, over $50 a month. Well over $50 a month. Skype it up. So Skype, it turns out you can get free U.S. to U.S. and U.S. to Canada calls unlimited for $2.99 a month. With Skype, and then if you have a smartphone, you can get the Skype application on your phone, load up the app, and essentially you have free minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I highly suggest this. Skype, I love you. Thank you for letting us use your system and come be on our show. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to talk about President Trump. Are we going to talk about a possible President, President Trump? Trump? <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, I can't stand. I mean, well, tell me why. Okay. 
He's a little smarmy. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a little, uh, a little. I mean, actually, you know, I listened to a, uh, an interview a couple of days ago with him, and he was talking about Obama and Obama's birth certificate, and he, uh-huh. he seemed very genuine. Uh-huh. So I, I don't dislike him. I guess I could say, but I don't know that I would want a guy like that running the country. He seems like an egomaniac. I, you know, I don't know. He's a businessman. He's been a businessman his whole life. I think he loves the country. I think he has a general concern about this issue regarding the birth certificate. I think it's valid, technically. Well, I, I did some more research, and his Obama's aunt also was like, this guy, mm-hmm. she was in Kenya when her uncle called from Honolulu saying he had a baby boy. Really? Yeah. So that means what? That Obama was born in Honolulu. Okay. And just because his grandma might have said in one moment that he was born, he was there in Kenya, born in Kenya or something, could have been a spiritual misstep, you know, who's to say what she really meant or if she even said it. I think it's a a big assumption that Trump is making. Okay. But technically, he has not shown his, like – he showed a certificate of live birth on his website, and that was considered, hey, that's, you know, that's still not the the original birth certificate. That has been sealed. And I just want to tell people because he originally paid 800000 to have everything sealed. There's obvi- I think also believe that there's a, there was an incident at Occidental College that, uh, w- that was also sealed. And, and it's interesting uh, to consider all this. Technically, it's, he's paid upwards, upwards of about $2 million to have these, these records sealed. So there's a big question. Why would someone do that? I, it may be, maybe you're right. It's not related to the birth, but it's related to something that happened along the line, and everything got sealed. I think that's probably possible. But I, these issues about his birth and where he exactly was born um, is going to – I think they're – I think it's an election year issue, and I hate to say that, but I think it is, and I think there's people that have questions about it still, and it will continue right through. I think it could be a, a political hot potato, I see. What do you think? Well, I hope it's not. I, I, I mean, in this country, supposedly, you're supposed to be in, innocent until you've got some sort of, of proof of otherwise, and, and I don't think anything that he's done has shown that he's born anywhere other than the United States. Okay. I don't know why people's assumptions have become political. It's not – healthy, and it's not, I mean, it, whether or not it's accurate, it really is taking a stab in the dark at this guy, because there really isn't a lot of shit on this guy, because he's a good human. Okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doubting that. I'm just saying there's questions, because this has technically never been made public. So it, 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 supposedly it has and it hasn't, but I think, again, I mean, what, it's, it's, it's a tough call. I think we need to... Uh, we need obviously uh, a president that that can take the lead, and I I like Obama. We're not technically slamming him. We're just saying it's interesting. This is an interesting issue. I would love to see his birth certificate. I would also love to see the other records that are sealed. So Oxnard College. But you know that's that's not realistic in this world. To get someone sealed. Well, no. If it's sealed and you paid a lot of money for it, you're not seeing it. That's the way it is. Really? Yeah, technically. But you know, hey. Um, I think we could, you know, we can we can talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. But President Trump, do you see? Do you think Donald Trump, the East Coast? I call him the East Coast Donald. Do you think he has a shot here? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if Sarah Palin has a shot, I think Palin's out. I you think, think so? Done, yeah. Okay, so you know, Trump, he's a great guy. I would love to see him run for office. It'd be a spectacle. He certainly has the money to run for office, doesn't oh, he? Oh, huge. Yeah, I mean, he would pour everything he had. I mean, it would be great for his business. It would probably sink a shitload of money into it and lose the election. But I would love to see him ask Obama these questions because they're about on level of ego. Trump has a presidential mentality without being president, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of why I don't want to see him in. It's kind of like getting a, getting a, an author to direct their own work. Okay, I, I see. Trump's well, too much of a, a money man. But you know, he did make a good point. I think the East Coast Donald made a great point about how he's done business deals. He doesn't really feel that Obama is qualified in that part of it. So, I, I you know, is he or isn't he? Well, I mean, at this stage with the Federal Reserve running the show, I just don't want a, a money man in charge. I'd rather have a lawyer in charge than a money man. A lawyer? Oh, okay, a lawyer. I thought, okay, well, you know, that's Obama's interesting. A lawyer. Yeah. 
Obama is a lawyer. That's correct. And he's also supposedly a constitutional um, professor, constitutional constitutional lawyer, I guess is what I'm looking for, right? I, I've heard that, yeah. Something so, like that. yeah. So the thing about it is um, he's, he's come under a lot of pressure. But, again, I think the whole thing, I think we're going into the political season, and we'll see what happens. Let's see. We got about what? We're we're about 15 minutes in right now. The um, so President Trump, President Trump, yay or nay? President Trump. Uh, it's a fun to say, but I just don't think it's a good idea. Okay. I, I would put it on par with like uh, Ross Perot getting elected. Really? Okay. Very good. Very good. I know he's very popular with the Tea Party, so we'll see. It's going to be very interesting. He would probably be the guy that runs against Obama. I yes. Think it comes down to you it. think so? Maybe. You think he'd win the Republican nomination? He's the, but I, I would put him up there if I, if I could vote he's for him. He's number two right now Maybe. behind Mitt Romney, according to this, this oh, poll. Fuck so, Mitt yes. Can I say that on the air? I just, you, I, you said fuck Mitt Romney. Mitt? Mitt? Is that I his name? I saw him implode in the last election. Fuck Mitt. Huh? Mitt Romney. I, Mitt Romney. I, I watched him just. He's I know he's against, against medicinal him. marijuana. That's ridiculous. He is now. Well, then he can't be president. You no, know, you don't think so? No way. We need to look at Obama's not for medicinal marijuana either, technically. So maybe we need a president that's for medicinal marijuana. Yeah, that might help, huh? At least Obama's not against it. He's kind of letting the state take the lead. Yeah, I don't know. He's kind of. I thought he waffled the other way. I mean, I saw something recently online where he came out and he said he was not for it. So that's okay. Uh, being yeah. against it is different than not being for it. I, I I think. Say? Mitt Romney is probably like, down with medical marijuana. No, none of it. Burn it all. And Obama's like, I'm just not going to say yes on this. Hey, where are they burning that stuff? Come on. Yeah, burn it in my pipe. Burn it in my pipe, no, please. No, actually, burning marijuana is not the best way to use it. it no. It really is medicinal. It's cannabis, it's eaten, cannabis. Uh, uh, taken lightly and uh, or heavily, depending on how you feel. Do we want to talk? This is not from a per- particularly non-professional point of view. Just, uh, right. As he's the medicine person. It's what happens when you're in the 90291. What can I say? 90291, baby. And you're in the 90291. So we have a totally, it's like 70% pro-medicinal marijuana here, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're looking for, you know, we feel that medicinal marijuana is probably a pro-American thing. So that's why we're for it, and we, we hope that people out there – oh, there's people out there that are getting ready to smash – George Washington. Pick up their laptop, throw it out the window. George Washington grew but tons of – I mean, you yeah. know the founding fathers. He did. Scott High as well. Thomas you Jefferson, know. okay. He had his own plantation. Plenty of black women around. God bless him. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, no one was racist. No, technically, but, you know, hey. I mean, cash crop, money crop. Yeah. Oh, I'm it's a, a cash crop. The War of 1812 was about hemp seeds, people. This is nice. So you're gonna. This is gonna be a recurring theme on the show. We're gonna like fill time with this issue because we we both believe in this issue. So the War of 1812. Yeah. Still a couple minutes or about one minute or a couple minutes. Um, they were they were they were Chinese. They were selling the the British and the French were both trying to monopolize the hemp seed market. Yes. Over through the Americans. Right. And. They were selling it to China, right? Hemp seed to China? It became really hard to procure hemp seeds in the States. And so Thomas Jefferson wanted to get the highest quality hemp seed, cannabis seeds, people. Think about that. That's your founder, okay? He wanted the highest quality uh, hemp seeds for his plantation. And, you know, and so, I mean, I think when you're in history class, right? When you hear about, you know, they're talking about the War of 1812, all they would talk about, right, I see, they would say it was about commerce, but they never would really delve into it, at least during my history class. And I loved history, right? But the point of the matter was they never talked about it. It was only later that we, I kind of got to fill in those blanks about that, that it was actually about hemp. Wow. So that's amazing. So there's a little, I guess, a little history lesson for you. We're coming up on 10 We're minutes. coming up, well, yeah. You know what that means, everyone. It's the whole down part of the show. Coming up. Welcome to the hoedown. Yes. Hoedown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give this man a, a hit of song hit to come. Woo! Hoedown. Right? What's on the market today? I mean, these young people were trying to make a point about nuclear power back then. Of course, it was Three Mile Island also here in this country. Right. So the Seabrook, they just dismantled the power plant. Um. What happened is that eventually, I mean, I believe that it, they stopped it for a while, but 
I believe that you know that was a huge win for the for for those activists. You know, it's it's like a it's like a hydrogen uh, balloon. You know, it's it's like you just they learned from the Hindenburg that that flammable shit is dangerous, more dangerous almost than yeah. it's to do. Whoa. But then, like it's like a hundred years later, we have actually developed now technology where you can make hydrogen balloons safely. So they say. And I'm sure in 100 years, fission energy is going to be totally, somehow totally safe. Maybe we can do it in, in the air, mm-hmm. but not affected by fucking plate tectonics and earthquakes and stuff, because that is super dangerous. It is dangerous. I mean, what if what if what happened in Japan happens in this country? We can't discount that. You know, people say that's alarmist. All I'm saying is that we need to be obviously aware. Um, and so people having solar these days, to me... I think it's a better, it's a hugely, uh, it's a better alternative. Wind is also a better alternative. The thing is great about solar and wind, particularly for another reason, but like solar is that uh, even like uh, two years ago, I saw they, they keep coming out with different kind of chemical components that are better solar paneling that hold and store more heat. Mm-hmm. And um, that gives me hope for the, the advancement in solar power. Like you're, you'll be able to charge mm-hmm. you know, your house off of one solar panel eventually. Right. It's like, it's, it's just, when you look at some of these automobiles, Okay, the Tesla Roadster in particular. Now, like guys, Tesla's actually going to make something that goes down to. They're going to make something that re, I guess will retail for fifty six thousand. Uh, because everything right now, of course, with Tesla, I think is way overpriced. But as as they lower the price, I mean, I think I think you at some point you'll see a lot of people who are driving Priuses eventually upgrade to all electric. You you would think Toyota would make that connection, but I think that that is also another thing, another way we can, we as people can impact the world oh, all around so us. So we go from Jap- Japanese meltdown to uh-huh. Alter- that solar alternative energy. That's really what it comes to. But yeah, is it, is it, technically, isn't it all, re- it's related. It is. Do you want safe, clean energy safe. or do you want this energy? Do you want them to make more nuclear power plants? No. Based on what we just saw, well, what do you guys want? You know, leave comments. Let us know what you guys think. Firstly, will you eat seafood? This is right. ne- and next next week, next Friday, uh, our show. You'll be able to call in and, and tell us right off the bat. Right. Sure. Do we have an email address for these good people? Uh, we will soon. Um, Kickintheho.info. Yes. It will be up. Hopefully, by the time you listen to this show, it will be available. And um, any other info we want to? Well, yeah, we just wanted to pass on some stuff. Um, we just wanted to give you a preview of our next show. We're going to be talking about smartphone applications. That's good and bad. Hackers are specifically back aim- ending into some of these mobile apps. Mm. Sk- um, it's not Skype, that's for sure. Skype is, great. It's Skype is awesome. Skype but is some of the applications, for instance, the Droid users are having trouble uh, with some of these smartphone apps. We're also going to talk about PBA. You guys will probably put that into a search engine right about now good or stuff. whatever. But... Um, PBA in the bottles. It's a uh, biasphenol. It's a yes. It's basically um, pollution in a bottle. Basically, it's the stuff that well, leaches it's, off. It's a CH3 uh, chemical bond, and which CH4 is like methane. So CH3 is kind of like the shit of plastic, basically, and it leaks into the stuff you drink in the plastic bottles. Very bad for your health. We're gonna have to wrap it up, you guys. Thanks. For listening, uh, right. Just kicking the whole things for blog talk. Radio, I see. It's good to see you. Joey Ho. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Next time, huh? All right. Take care, guys. Bitch. Thanks for listening, guys. Bitch. 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 Bitch.